So a big thank you to Mr. Barton for this animation. I've put a link to where I got this from on the uh, on the description part of this video. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this graph, which is y equals x squared plus 2. And we can see we've got an area between 3 and 1 there. So what I want you to do is try and imagine the volume as this area here is rotated around the x-axis. So we're going to take this area and rotate it around the x-axis. So as I can see, it's rotating. And as it goes, it forms a solid. So now we've got a 3D shape. And I can see that if I rotate this round, yeah, I can see it's spun all the way around to give a 3D solid. So let's reset it back to where it originally was. And let's just turn the axis slightly round so you can see this volume being formed from a different angle. So I'll start it rotating again and you'll see a better picture of this solid being formed. So that area is rotating. All the space that it covers becomes the volume. So that is what I mean by the volume of a revolution of an area. Again, thanks to Mr. Barton for this animation. So we're now going to look at how to mathematically calculate the value of such volumes. So we need to think of this volume as consisting of a lot of infinitely thin disks. There's the first disk. Right next to it is another disk. So all these are infinitely thin disks. So the radius of such disks is simply the y coordinate of the curve, which in this case is x squared plus 2. But we'll keep it generic for now. So each disk contributes pi times the radius squared. In this case, the radius is y. So I'm just going to write this down. Each disk is pi times y squared. So all disks, if we add them together, is the sum of all the pi y squareds, the sum of this infinite number of disks. However, we find out um, in integration that integration sums infinitely thin strips. So actually, a better way of writing this out is the volume equals the integral between our two limits, b and a, of pi y squared, pi r squared, each disk, and everything's with respect to the x-axis, so it's dx in this case. So the volume is just that integral there. And actually, you'll typically see it more often taught as being a volume equals pi times the integral between b and a of y squared dx. And the reason we do that, it's just seen as being simpler to take scalar multiples outside of the integration sign. So this here is the key formula for the volume when rotated around the x-axis. And the way to remember which axis we're turning around, it's always the variable which we're integrating with respect to. So if it's dx, it's around the x-axis. I'll show you another formula later for rotating around the y-axis, but we'll stick with the x-axis for now. Let's have a look at an example question. So this question says that the diagram shows part of the curve y equals 6 over 2x plus 1 squared. The shaded region is bounded by the curve and the lines x equals 0, x equals 1, and y equals 0. So that's basically just describing what's happening in the diagram. We've got x equals 0 here, x equals 1 there, and y equals 0 here. So it's the area contained within all those lines. Um, find the exact volume of the solid produced when the shaded region is rotated completely about the x-axis. So we're going to take this solid here, we're going to take this area and form a solid by just rotating it 360 degrees around the axis. So difficult to visualize, but hopefully the animation I showed you before will help you visualize that better. So now, remember the formula. If I just go back up here, there it was there. Volume equals pi times the integral between b and a of y squared dx. So let's write that down. So volume equals pi times the integral. And our limits are 1 and 0 of y squared dx equals pi times the integral between 1 and 0. And we can do better than just writing y squared now, because we know y is equal to this. 
So if we square that, we end up with 36 over and square the bottom, 2x plus 1 to the power of 4 dx. I can write that in a more integration friendly format. So pi times the integral between 1 and 0 of 36, 2x plus 1 to the power of minus 4 dx. And we'll keep going. Equals, and now let's integrate, let's add 1 to the power. Equals pi. Um, and we've got 36. 2x plus 1, and add 1 to the power is minus 3, over minus 3, divide by the new power. But also, remember, we need to divide by the differential of the bracket. This is a reverse chain rule. What's in the bracket is linear. But we can skip doing all the integration by substitution working, because we know we're just going to end up dividing by 2. So if we make the bottom 2 times bigger, that's the equivalent of dividing by 2 between 1 and 0 equals pi and 36 divided by six, uh, minus 6 becomes minus 6 2x plus 1 to the power of minus 3 between 1 and 0 and let's sub in the limits it's always good practice to show subbing in the limits so two big empty brackets with a minus between them it's always good form to show this because it's worth a mark even in the event of a wrong answer if you try to work the limits out separately, then subtract them, you wouldn't get the mark because you wouldn't be showing that you can subtract the limits being subbed incorrectly. Better to do it like this. So minus 6, 2 lots of 1 plus 1 to the minus 3. Take. And I'm almost made the biggest mistake anyone can make on these questions. I've almost forgotten to multiply by the pi. It's dead easy to forget multiplying by the pi. So always, always, always remember to put the pi at the front as well. I almost forgot there. You shouldn't. Minus 6. 2 lots of 0. Plus 1. To the minus 3. Equals pi. Times. And then we've got... 2 plus 1 to the minus 3, so minus 6 over, and 3 to the minus 3 is uh, 27. Take uh, minus 6 equals, so let's just put that in the calculator, let's take the easy way out. Minus 6 over 27 minus minus 6 times pi is 52 ninths pi. So there we have it. We found the volume of a solid form when rotating around the x-axis. Now let's have a look at a solid form when rotating around the y-axis and it has a very very similar formula. So let's have a look at another question. So this question says the diagram shows that the curve with equation y equals 2 log x minus 1. The point p has coordinates naught p so let's label that on the diagram as soon as we get in there. So that has coordinates, naught P. The region R, shared in the diagram, is bounded by the curve, the lines X equals naught, Y equals naught, and Y equals P. The units on the X axis, on the axes, are centimetres. The region R is rotated completely around the Y axis to form a solid. So this now isn't rotated as we saw before, it's rotated around the Y axis to form a solid. So when we do that, the formula is very similar to the one around the x-axis. So the one for the x-axis was volume equals pi times the integral of y squared dx. And I pointed out before, you can remember which axis we're rotating around because it's the variable that we're integrating with respect to. So the y-axis, we just it's exactly the same formula, but with the x's and y's swapped. So v equals pi times the integral of x squared dy. So we've got this equation of the curve here. And we now want to work out this quantity here. But one thing you've got to remember now is that the limits here, b and a, are now y limits. 
So we're integrating with respect to y, so we need to put y limits in. So instead of using x limits, the two limits that we're going to use for y are this y value here, which is p, and this value here, which is 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is note the new y limits. The y limits p and 0. Okay, so now we've got the volume equals pi times the integral between p and 0 of x squared dy. But we don't have what x equals. We're told what y equals in terms of x. So we're going to need to rearrange this to say x equals so we can sum it in there. So let's do that now. So we've got y equals 2 log of x minus 1, which means that half y equals log of x minus 1, which means that if we're e both sides now, e to the half y equals x minus 1, which in turn means x equals 1 plus e to the half y. Okay, so now we've got what we need. We've got x equals. We can sub it into this. So, we've now got the volume equals pi times the integral between p and 0 of x squared. And we know x is 1 plus e to the half y dy equals, oh, forgot to put the squared there. Again, common mistake. So, the squared must go there. Pi times the integral of x squared. Very common error. Pi times the integral between p and 0. Let's multiply that bracket out. So we get 1 plus 2e to the half y plus e to the y dy. And now we're ready to integrate. So that's equal to pi times... And remember, you mustn't forget to write the pi at the front. So integrating this, I get y plus, and 2e to the half y integrates to itself, but I need to divide by the differential of the power. So that becomes 4e to the half y. And e to the y integrates to itself to just become again e to the y. Between p and 0. And now subbing the limits in, so pi, then two empty brackets, must show the limits being subbed in. So we've got p plus 4e to the half p plus e to the p. Take 0 plus 4e to the 0 plus e to the 0. equals pi times, okay, so we've got the e to the p's, which we're going to put at the front, plus 4e to the half p, plus p, then we've got to take 0, that's 4, 4 to the 0 is 4, e to the 0 is 1, so take 5, and there's our answer. And we've got the luxury here of being able to check the answer with that which was given the question. So indeed it does match what we are given here. So pi times eight the p plus four eight the half p plus p take five. Yep, yeah, exactly what we got. So just to wrap things up, when we're rotating around the y-axis, the formula is instead x squared dy, not y squared dx. So we need to rearrange the equation to say x equals, like we did here, and then sub that into the formula. And remember, use y limits, not x limits, when rotating around the y-axis. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.